Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com and I, since I'm talking about favorite of all time artists and then albums to an extent, I want to do, and hopefully this won't be too long, my Apes and Androids and Call Florence Pow special collection video, which it's not a long collection, that's one reason I chose it. Um, and so, the long story short, or as short as possible, in 2008 I stumbled across a blog called Kokoro, uh, which is no longer around of course, which had a, had a lot of albums and stuff that you could check out. Um, and I had some hits and misses. In fact, that would be a... I have two future videos. One for, uh, like, what I call Indie-tronica or independent rock. Electronic rock for the 21st century. Whatever you want. I'll want to do a special video on that I've talked about in the blog. But another one I just was thinking of might be worth doing sort of pocketed times of albums when I... You know, around that period of time. And this was in 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009. A lot of these bands were popping up. Um... But the thing is, there's still a lot of them that do pop up, and there's just so many of them, I don't have time to check them all out. But I happened to just check it out, largely because of the cover. It was this album from the band Apes and Androids, it were called. It just said Psych. Psychedelic Rock, or Psych... I think it just said Psych, that's all it said. It was early in 2008, I want to say it was January, early January. So, and the thing is, I, I checked it out, but I was listening to the track list, as I found out later, in the incorrect order. <laughs> but, um... And it took me a long time to listen to it, because this album had like 18 tracks, something like that. And I would get through a few tracks, and then i, I get interrupted, and I had to do something with my work, because I listen to music at work primarily. So I probably did not fully listen to the album for at least a few weeks, probably not until February. And I didn't actually listen to it in the correct order for a few weeks or a couple months later. So it really, while I discovered it and was introduced to it, Apes and Androids in whatever it was, late January, early February of 2008. It really was not for a few months before I really fully ingested, ingested, invested, and really got the sense about what was going on. But I didn't think it would ever become my third favorite album of all time. So, so, but I'm just going to backtrack now in the history and then showing my collection. So, Apes and Androids members, two members, and they had other members, but it was mainly two guys, Brian Jacobs and David Tobias. David Tobias and Brian Jacobs. David Tobias, I think, was the primary guitarist. Um, and Brian Jacobs was, did more of the lead vocals and he played a lot of the keys, but I'm not sure if both of them didn't play both. Um... And there's a big connection with a band who I got into not that long after, um, um, Self. What you guys know is Matt Mahaffey, and I have a lot of, I have all the Self, almost all the Self albums. I'll have to do a video about them later. Um, but let's see, it doesn't, you know, I'm looking at, here's the first album, it's called, it came out, eventually came out, These Are the Plans, it was called. I, this one's got a little, kind of got two copies. I bought a second copy primarily because they, they were not easy to find. Um, Sponge Bath Records, which is Matt Mahaffey Self's record label, I believe. But, you know, I guess I, to get the credits and stuff is going to take too long, so I'm not going to go through that. Maybe in a future video. Maybe I'll do a video about each individual one of the releases I'm going to be showing today. But So I just revisited this record, These Are the Plans, from 2000. I, I think it was not that long after they finished high school, because they're... They're not, I don't think they're quite as old as me, so there, it, was, it, was, it came out in 2000. They wrote this stuff in the mid to late 90s. Um, and a lot of keyboards, a lot of, uh, like, analog keyboards, a lot of quirky vocals. There's this definitely distinct elements of, like, artists, hearing artists like Beck and, like, Weezer. There's, the, the guitar riffs are very similar to some of Weezer's stuff. Um, but the production, the vocal arrangements, and the vocals are not as distinct um, and I think, actually, I could be wrong, but I, it, it was, because, like I said, Brian seems to do more of the vocals later, but when, when this, I think maybe David did a fair amount of the lead vocals, because, you know, and their vo voices can be kind of similar at times, and the way they use vocals is weird, because a lot of it is just chanting, or almost, like, giant, like, not whispering, but, like, just singing softly, which is not, not much vibrato with it. Anyway, but my favorite tracks on this, I mean, I just listened to it again, a lot of the instrumental parts are my favorite parts. Um, experimental times, I'm traveling. Um, let's see here. Uh, Late tonight's a ballad. Here, I'll show you. You can barely see the track list there, unfortunately. 
this was, I mean, a very, like, sort of, like I said, affordable budget, this album, These Are the Plans. And they don't even have the track list in there, but, um, yeah, I mean, periodic tables, kind of quirky. There's some rap in here. I think they were probably influenced by the likes of, like, Rage Against the Machine or, I mean, Beck, of course, I think has done his share of rapping, too. Some vocal distortion. Um, Valerie's Revenge, you know, they, they sing with vocal distortion, stuff like that. It's quirky. It's the best description for this album, These Other Plans. It's a very quirky record. And like their later music, but not quite as refined, there are these moments that happen in almost every track that that just kind of surprise you and you love. If you've ever heard Self, which a lot of people that probably have heard this have heard Self, but not people, not all the people that know Self know Call Florence Powell. There's a song they have called Trunk Full Amps, among others, that has this great, like, bridge this like kind of with the dynamics the, where the bridge is very quiet and it builds up. There's like two or three of mo tracks on this album that have those moments, uh, whether it be keyboards or a little guitar riff or just some studio technique. Um, but again, and a lot of it is like it sounds a little bit like Gizmodry from Self, which is an album that came out in the same year, was notable for using child instruments, all child instruments. I don't know for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if. Some of that approach came up with this. Just a little little cat, little Casio keyboard reference in it. And um, the percussion happens. There's some drum machines, I think, but there's still some percussion. And they were definitely experimenting with, you know, what what keyboard and what, you know, what patches they could use. But a lot of it was analog. And, that's, and the production's not, again, it's of its budget. But, um, so I'll just move on. That came out in 2000. These are the plans. It's a fun debut album. I mean, it's not as memorable as the rest of their music, they'll say, but it's still a fun debut album. So then two years later, I think it was two years later, yep, they put out an EP called um, The Strange Situation. I remember I found this not that long. You can look at the sticker. This is 2010. I think it was earlier than that. I found this. It didn't take me a lot. I did find my first copy, but this took me forever to find. I could not find it. But then I, I found it on, like, Amazon. That was a big deal. But um, this is, like, okay, the recommended... Recommended if you like Ween, Enon, The Unicorns, and Ratatat. Ratatat's one of the bands. I've never heard The Unicorns or Enon. But Indie Tronica, Electronic Rock, Electro Rock, Futuristic Electro Rock... The thing about this, just listening to this again today, um, these three copies I have of this, um, so you can see I got one at Cheapo and then the two I ordered. It's just the guitar riffs and the production and the energy and just sort of the creativity is so, is a step up. And it's very much, I mean, I just get, just get goosebumps listening to this. I just love one of a kind. A New Life, Preparation for Battle, that's like mostly an instrumental piece. There's a video that someone made in the city, like sped up with that. It's really synthy, really fun, happy, quirky synthy. But then it, it, it kind of alternates between that and this sort of um, melodic guitar riff that's very kind of cinematic. And they have a little chanting on it. Oh, I just... And Creepy Girls is Queen. I mean, there's a huge Queen element, queen, huge Bowie element. You're starting to hear more of that more prominently with this, with the five tracks on this album. Mother Dying is sort of, sort of like a, I wouldn't call it a ballad. It's sad. The vocal approach is unusual for Brian, but it, or not unusual, but it's much different. And, um, but it's, his vocals soar, both that and Creepy Girls. Uh, it's, that's like Bohemian Rhapsody 2.0 in some ways. But, uh, man, it's just, I would say that this EP, it may, again, Matt Mahaffey, who played drums and produced, like, mixed the Cleese of the Plans, also played on this. He mixed this, rather. Um, this EP, I would say I nearly like as much. This is like Prelude to Blood Moon, basically. And this was in 2002, so... So, their story from 2002 to 2008... I should know more. I know they played live a fair amount. I think they played South by Southwest. I remember finding a South by Southwest video from like 2006. Um, but they became known as a live band. And later, they were, uh, I, know, I think it was David Tobias was quoted as saying that they do things as much as they can live to make things as, as unique live because there's not much to, left to do in the studio. And So they dressed up with face paint and wear skeleton shirts and they have these dancers doing this sort of 
choreograph sort of thing, almost like Michael Jackson's Thriller video. A lot of their music has a sort of horror, 80s horror, like like um, Danny Elfman um, element, like um, Monster Mash. You know, even that, it's like from the 60s. But So I may as well just get to it, and I'm not going to be able to tell everything. But um, So they find that the, the 2008, you know, re release of Blood Moon, I have the two, you know, mint copies right here. Um, and of course I've got, I showed another video, this is Golden Prize and Riverside. Riverside, if I had to choose one track off Blood Moon, which is my favorite, it still kind of is my go-to. It's the most sort of epic, it's the most prog, you know, it's got this great kind of Brian May-esque guitar solo, uh, very synth, synthy sounding. But, I mean, <laughs> it's a perfect concept album, it's what a perfect escape album. Perfect sci-fi, like 80s sci-fi element or late 70s sci-fi, like a sci-fi movie. I think of Night of the Comet. Um, I mean, the Blood Moon theme one, Make Forever Last Forever. Um, that's the track that has the, the riff that go that the riff that, the, the line that kind of riders on the storm, which I always think of the doors, of course, riders on the storm, but um, it's synth driven, but the synth synthesizers, the fat synth sound like they could be coming from a robot from the future in space and they're so well crafted and written they're so melodic and the, they flow there's a perfect energy um golden prize um another one uh just it's just epic uh bad kind of wetness is like a little interval they have like a sounder from the well and it's like we don't understand you is catchy and melodic and a lot of people consider that like the it was originally called get your hands up it sounds like people being held up but i kind of look at their name apes and androids and blood moon sort of being the concept for this sort of talking about a, a society where maybe androids are basically done basically they run they control life on this part of space whether it be on the on a moon this blood moon and so the androids are like maybe you know holding up <laughs> Some of the actual humans or other androids, I'm not sure. It's influenced by the likes of, you know, um, what am I thinking? Blade Runner or Total Recall or uh, you name your sci-fi story. Michael Crichton or, you know, um, Westworld. There's a lot of others that kind of have come to mind, that, you know. Nights of the Week is really catchy too. Radio, I'm thinking of, and that when I originally heard the track list, that was like the first and second song. And now, which they mentioned, Dermaine Dupree and a, a DJ, and they use some vo vocal effects where they slow it down. And it's like, these things won't help you, but they'll, make, they'll definitely make you sound weird. There's a clip also, I think, in that was it talking about the west, the east coast, and some woman who's upset at like her ex boyfriend, I think it is, who she moved out. It's it's well, I mean, there's a lot of humor, especially on. All the albums, actually, I just, it's not exclusive just to, to Blood Moon, but they use they, they subtle humor. It's almost like they were fans of Weird Al Yankovic. Um, Johnny and Sarah is a total favorite of mine. That track has this just riff that's just catchy and energetic. Um, and it's a story song. I keep on thinking of Bonnie and Clyde to an extent, but the lyrics don't quite translate. But maybe Bonnie and Clyde was, you know, influenced by that. Uh, Sweetest Secrets, a song I didn't like as much originally, but I, it grew to like more and more. Um, and the, the, the second, like the last six songs, it is 18 tracks. Um, some of them are ballads that sort of, I, I get, Doyle is Dead is talking about Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. There's a story, there's a reference they mention the, in the, the lyrics, and uh, there's a w Wikipedia entry, I think it's Sir Arthur Conan Doyle or someone related to that. Um, like a murder of some kind, like a murder mystery or how some, someone died. But Imaginary Friends, Locked in a Car. For some reason, Locked in a Car, I think of Six Broken Shoulders from King's X because uh, someone being locked in a car. It, <laughs> um, Trank. And then Riverside, like I said, is the epic sort of talking about people like, I don't know, like, like someone, original at the beginning of Blood Moon, they land on the moon. That's what I'm thinking. There's like space explorers and then they're leaving Riverside because no one's gone. But there's people talking about a a man and his wife or something like that, um, kind of having an uncomfortable silence given the fact like everyone's gone. Um, and then Blood Moon 2, they leave the, the moon or leave the planet that they landed on. That's my sort of semi, you know, abridged or, you know, de somewhat detailed interpretation in a few minutes. I can come up with the concept for Blood Moon. 
Um, but oh, man, it's just it's one of those records, you know. It's one of those records where you, you're you're amazed by you're amazed or shocked by how much you get from it and how you continue to listen to it and you revere it. And I mean, there may be a day where I just can't listen to it anymore because I've just burnt it out, like people with dark the dark side of the moon or something. Um, anyway, I have right here, and it's interesting. I have something else in here. This is the single for Nights of the Week, which I think I got a, probably the MySpace page. So I have a few other items. I have an Anathel DVD, which I don't know, I needed a spot for that at the time I put that in there. And then I have this, which is another copy of that. I think I bought this unknowing that I bought the other one. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you like Queen, if you like David Bowie, you like Thomas Dolby, you like Sparks, you like Guns N' Roses and Metallica, they, I mean, the guitar parts at times, you know, Apes and Androids and Call for Power were just a highly unique band. If you like Of Montreal, I mean, you could say, well, Of Montreal's, the vocal approach at points, they did similarly, and to a point, they had, Of Montreal's got like 15 albums, and Apes and Androids only has one, and then the two other releases under the name Call Florence Paul, it's not fair in some ways. Um, you know, and they're quirky, they're not like, totally like the most accessible band on the planet. They're experimental, but the experiments totally work for me. I like, look, I like in like Pepe Deluxe and a few other bands that are kind of in a similar fashion won me over for quirkiness and songwriting and prog at the same time. But but the one record I would probably endorse to anyone who loves them and hasn't heard uh, is, is Cale Parks, also who knows Aloha. Um, Brian Jacobs mixed this album and he may have even produced it. It came out in 2009, just the year after um, Blood Moon came out in 2008. Um, but it was pretty much after they were done, I guess. But, uh, yeah, like, what is it? Family? Running Family? That song? There's this, this, like, sort of melancholy and the sense on this, this album, this EP. I mean, Cale Parks is the drummer from, multi-instrumentalist from Aloha. He's got some other music, but I don't know if he ever put out anything quite like this. I'm still trying to listen to more of his music. But, uh, this is called To Swift Mars. I'm sorry, I didn't say the name of it. And I raved about it a couple years ago. So, um... You know, unfortunately, Apes and Androids broke up, but, you know. Brian Jacobs, of course, has done some solo jams, as he said, and some of the songs are really good. Um, let's see, I have the list right here. They were on his SoundCloud, under the, the noniker Majesty, M-A-J-E-S-T-Y-Y. -Y. Um, Beautiful Child of Everlasting Love, Spirits Touch, The Notion, Dark Master, and Lost Mesmerist. And he's also done some remixes of pop songs. I think even Rihanna and a couple others. But some of those have some of the Apes and Androids moments I love. But it's, it's mainly just his vocals and synthesizers. A lot of keys and synthesizers. Not too much guitar from my memory after listening to them again. But um, my wife kind of compared them to... It wasn't uh, Death Cab, but it was um, like the Postal Service or something like that. But but it's Brian Jacobs' vocal style, which I really love him as a singer. I'm not really really into the style like of Montreal use Kevin Barnes. He, it's always sound too melodramatic and a little cheesy. Brian Jacobs has that right blend. Although some people compare him to Tom York, but it's night and day for me. Um, but yeah, if you like that, definitely. The, it's on Spotify. I don't know if he's still on his SoundCloud page, but... Um, yeah, the, the, the Notions one and Spirits Touch. I remember I was just totally jazzed when those came up, but I didn't know if it would lead to much, because Brian, or David Tobias, the other main songwriter in Apes and Androids, is not a musician, as far as I know, a working musician. He's, runs a restaurant, or like a bar restaurant in New York, and that's where they're from. I forgot to mention, Apes and Androids from New York, the part of, like, the, one of the boroughs, they were, they knew each other and met each other, and they lived throughout the 2000s. A lot of those other bands doing this sort of electronic rock, like, um, not M83, but um, around that same time, Alt J, um, and then there were. I've mentioned some of them in um, in that in the entry, and I'll do more on that if I do an indie tronica electronic rock for the 21st century video. But uh, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, definitely endorse Apes and Androids for anyone who likes electronic rock. If you like like Mute Math or if you know OSI even, because it it's definitely progressive progressive rock of a kind. Apes and Androids, but it's just it's not going to necessarily catch your ear right away. You, you shouldn't just like write it off after hearing one song. Some of the songs on Blood Moon are very catchy though. Radio, um, Hot Kathy, Golden Prize. I mean those have a hook. Nights of the Week, but. Um, 
yeah, I just, it was one of those cases where I went back to it and back to it and I was like, holy crap, what in the world is this band doing? And, um, you know, that's why I love them so much. And, you know, if they never put out anything else again, it's, we have this, of course, but if they do, it'd be great. Them and the River Empires are in that sort of pedestal for me. But thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.